Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Patrick Byrne. And I'm here today from Hanover, New Hampshire. I've searched for a uh, couple questions upon which I might get the two of you to disagree. Uh, first, what level of taxation, and I, I direct these as much to Mr. Munger, therefore, as to you, Mr. Buffett. First, what level of taxation on capital gains is most conducive to the long-term economic health of a society? And is that also the fair or just rate? In other words, is the just rate of, ta of taxation on capital gains precisely that rate that creates the most economic stuff, or is there some other goal the state might pursue? And as a not so subtly re related question, I, uh, I work in a New Hampshire factory that makes industrial torches. As CEO, I might add, Patrick. <laughs> Say again? As CEO of that, of that working made it sound like you were down there on the floor. I just wanted people to. <laughs> Patrick writes me letters from chairman to chairman, so I, I think we've got to get him back at it. <laughs> Continuing. Uh, well, it's a small company. I do work as CEO, but it's uh, not much of a hierarchy. Uh, we make torches used in heavy manufacturing, and the fortunes of our uh, factory echo those of industrial America. Do you agree with the conventional wisdom that maintains that the age of classical industrial America has passed, and that we will s that America cannot be competitive in the long term with uh, low-wage countries? So the first question is on. Uh, taxation of capital gains, and then the second is on uh, the future for industrial America. I have a sensational answer on the tip of my tongue, but I think I'll let Charlie go first. We'll <laughs> refine it a bit. <laughs> well, I think there's an easy answer to your capital gain issue, and one is what makes an economy work best in some abstract mathematical sense. And the other is the consideration that you allude to, which gets into issues of fairness. And it's as Aristotle felt that systems worked better when they were generally perceived as fair. The civilization worked better if people saw the differences and rewards as having been fairly uh, reasonably fair anyway. And I think that if you had a civilization where if you work 90 hours a week driving a taxi cab with no money, no medical insurance and so forth, and somebody else does nothing but own Berkshire Hathaway shares and sit on the country club porch and peel off a few every year to pay the bills, uh, that would be regarded as so unfair that even if it had some theoretical economic efficiency, it would be counterproductive for our particular civilization to uh, have that kind of a tax code. So I'm all for having some taxation of, of capital gains. Once you reach that conclusion, you get into the question of what, should, what is the fair rate? Uh, I think the fair rate might well be a little lower than it is now, but not much lower. Sounds to me like he's a seller. The Berkshire. <laughs> uh, Patrick is a um, former heavyweight boxer and uh, just got his PhD fairly recently from Stanford with a 700 page dissertation, which has in it some commentary that actually bears on this. And, and, I, and I thank Patrick actually for introducing me to a, uh, to a uh, uh, kind of a system of uh, construct, mental construct that, that to attack questions like this. Patrick gave me the example one time, and I think this may go back to John Rawls at, at Harvard, but he said, just imagine that you were going to be born 24 hours from now, and you had been granted this extraordinary power to determine the rules, the economic rules, of the society 
that you were going to enter, and those rules were going to prevail for your lifetime and your children's lifetime and your grandchildren's lifetime. Now you, you've got this ability in this 24-hour period to make this decision as to the structure, but there's a, as in most of these genie-type questions, there's one hooker. You don't know whether you're going to be born black or white. You don't know whether you're going to be born male or female. You don't know whether you're going to be born bright or retarded. You don't know whether you're going to be born infirm or able-bodied. You don't know whether you're going to be born in the United States or Afghanistan. In other words, you're going to participate in 24 hours in what I call the ovarian lottery. You know, it's the most it's the most important event in which you'll ever participate. You know, it's going to determine way more than what school you go to, how hard you work, all kinds of things. You're going to get one ball drawn out of a barrel that probably contains 5.7 billion balls now. And that's you. Now, what kind of a society are you going to construct with that in prospect? Well, I suspect you would focus on two issues that Patrick uh, mentioned in his question. You would try to figure out a system that is going to produce an abundant amount of goods and where that abundance is going to increase at a rapid rate during your lifetime and your children and your grandchildren so they can live better than you do in aggregate and the grandchildren can live better. So you'd want some system that turned out what people wanted and needed, and it, you'd want something that turned them out in increasing quantities uh, for as far as the eye could see. But you would also want a system that, that, while it did that, treated the people that did not win the ovarian lottery in a way that you would want to be treated if, if you were in their position, because a lot of people don't win the lottery. I mean, Charlie, when we were born, the odds were over 30 to 1 against being born in the United States. You know, just winning that portion of the lottery, enormous plus. We wouldn't be worth a damn in Afghanistan. You know, we'd be giving talks and nobody would be listening. <laughs> Terrible. Right, right. That's the worst of all worlds. Uh, so we want it that way. We, we want it partially in the era in which we were born by being born male. You know, it, uh, partially in the era in which we were born by being born male. It, uh, and 50% uh, of the talent in the country, that, and 50% uh, of the talent in the country was excluded from, in a very large part, from virtually all occupations. Uh, we won it by being white. You know, it, it, no, no tribute to us. It just happened that way. And we won it in another way by being wired in a certain way, which we had nothing to do with that happens to enable us to be good at valuing businesses. And, uh, you know, is that the greatest talent in the world? No, it just happens to be something that pays off like crazy in this system. Now, when you get through with that, you still want to have a system where the people that are born like Bill Gates or Andy Grove or something get to turn those talents to work in a way that really maximizes those talents. I mean, it would be a crime to have Bill or Andy or people like that or Tom Murphy working in some pedestrian occupation just because you had this great egalitarian instinct. But the, the trick, it seems to me, is to have some balance that causes the people who have the talents that can produce goods that people want in a market society to turn them out in great quantity and to keep wanting to do it all their lives, and at the same time takes the people that lost the lottery and make sure that just because they, you know, on that, on that one moment in time, they've got the wrong ticket. Uh, don't live a life that's dramatically worse than the people that were luckier. And uh, when I get all through with that long speech, I probably come out with the idea that the capital gains tax as it exists today is probably about right. So that's, that's I see very few people, and I've, I've, I've been around uh, a lot of people with money and talent over time. They don't always go together, but I've been around both classes. <laughs> and the, I see very few of them that are turned off from using their talents by a 28 percent. It doesn't happen. I mean, they do what they like to do. And 
part of the reason they're good at what they do is they like to do it. And, and I just, I've just never seen it happen. And uh, I've seen a lot of people that pay taxes that are higher than 28% that are contributing more to society by some judgment other than a pure market system.